Hi and welcome to today's video. Um, it's our fourth video on body systems and today we're going to be looking at the digestive system. To do that we're going to break it down into three parts. So we're going to look at the organs involved, we're then going to look at absorption and assimilation and then we're going to look at ingestion as well. First let's have a look at some of the key terms we're going to be using within um, this particular video. So first one's ingestion and that's basically the consumption of substances uh, by an organism. So in humans, obviously, we'd put substances within our mouth and that would then go into the gastrointestinal tract. So that's basically eating and drinking. In single-celled organisms, they usually absorb their nutrients or their substances through their cell membrane. So here's obviously our mouth and we've got our teeth and our teeth are there to obviously break up these, uh, the food into smaller pieces, which we then swallow. Now, when we swallow, the food actually moves down our esophagus through a process known as peristalsis. So it's squeezed down into our stomachs. We also have saliva within our uh, mouths as well, and that helps to break down um, particular types of food, namely carbohydrates. So as the food is pushed down um, the esophagus through this process of peristalsis, it reaches the stomach. Now the stomach is basically a muscular bag and in it contains acid and even more enzymes which breaks down that food further. So to start off with we had the mechanical digestion which occurred in the mouth through mastication which is basically chewing your food and then you've got the chemical digestion which is the food being broken down into even smaller pieces within the stomach through the use of acid and more enzymes as well. The actual food smoke for a couple of hours where it's going through this whole process of churning. So the, the muscular bag is squeezing and covering the food in acid and more enzymes. After a few hours, it eventually turns into a runny liquid. And this liquid is given the name of chyme. So after a few hours, the sphincter, um, which is keeping the stomach sealed, that actually opens up and this runny liquid runs into the small intestines where the smaller, now digested particles can be absorbed. Things such as digested uh, carbohydrates, proteins and fats. So here we've got the molecule starch and here we've got the molecule glucose. And as you can see, the, the actual difference is that starch is just a chain of glucose molecules. Now starch is too big or too large to be absorbed so what we have to do is we have to break it down and we do this through um, proteins called enzymes. So carbohydrate enzymes, so here we've got our molecule of starch, carbohydrate enzymes, what they do is they actually break the bonds holding these monomer glucose units together and then you're left with individual sugar molecules. So carbohydrates actually break down carbs. You also have protease enzymes, which break down proteins into their subunits, which are called amino acids. And you have lipase enzymes, which break down lipids into their subunits, which is fatty acids and glycerol. Here we can see that the lining of the small intestines is made up of packed finger-like projections called villi. Um, and what these are designed to do is to increase the surface area of your small intestines for absorption. On these uh, finger-like projections, they also have even smaller microvilli, which increases the surface area even further. Okay, so if we look at the structure of um, a villus in more detail, we can see that it's actually got a very, very good blood supply. Um, the reason why that is obviously is for um, to pick up the nutrient to the rest of the body where it's needed. So here you can see that the actual cell wall, or the, the thickness of the cell, I should say, is only one cell thick. So therefore, there's only a small distance between what's inside the small intestines and also the blood supply as well. So here you've got a very, very well. You've got a capillary, which is obviously very, very thin this aids diffusion as well. 
Okay, so here we just got a nice little summary of the whole process of absorption. So here would be uh, the villus. You can see it's one cell thick, and then inside here you'd have the small intestines, would be in here, and this is obviously the bloodstream. So once these sugars, so things like starch, proteins, and lipids, once they're broken up into their monomers, they're more easily absorbed into the bloodstream, where they will be transported to the liver for a process known as assimilation, which is basically where they are rearranged into more useful um, products that the body needs. So for sugars, it'd be things like glycogen, um, for amino acids, it'd be different types of proteins, um, things like keratin, collagen, so on and so forth. So any undigested food um, actually carries on past the small intestines into the large intestines. Now in the large intestines, this is where water reabsorption takes place. So any excess water that's still mixed in with the waste food gets reabsorbed back into the bloodstream and then the waste material passes on towards the rectum and the anus. Now the rectum is basically where the waste material gets stored and the anus is where it passes through. Simple enough. So here we've got the overview of the whole digestive system. Ingestion um, occurs obviously or begins in the mouth through mastication, i.e. chewing, and saliva containing amylase, which is an enzyme, so that starts to break down food, um, not only mechanically but also chemically as well. Once swallowed, the food is pushed down the esophagus through the process of peristalsis where it enters the stomach. In the stomach, acid and more enzymes continue that chemical breakdown of the food. Um, after a couple of hours, it is released into the small intestines. The gallbladder actually secretes bile, um, which helps break down fats. And the pancreas releases insulin, which helps the body cells take up glucose. Once into the small intestines, the nutrients are absorbed into the bloodstream and carried to the liver where a process of assimilation occurs and the undigested food is passed into the large intestines where the water gets reabsorbed and the solid waste is stored in the rectum where it then passes out through the anus. And that's your very quick overview of the digestive system. Okay, so that concludes this short presentation. Hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to keep a lookout for 